I've been saying for a while now that I was going to start to share some of my recent furniture projects and I finally, finally decided to post this. So as some of you may know, those who follow me, especially on my Instagram page, y'all know I do a little bit more than just singing. I also happen to revamp furniture on the side. I do a lot of home renovations, lighting, flooring, live edge tables, and plumbing. Bam! So I guess you could say I have a little bit of dude in me. Wait, nope, nope, that didn't come out right. I recently moved to Toronto in February, which was excellent timing considering the state of the world. And I basically moved into a streamer house and met one of my best friends and brother from another mother, probably one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, as demonstrated in this photo of him here. <laughs> he enlisted me to do the wonderful task of redesigning his personal space, which he will also be using for streaming, like myself. And I'm gonna show you step by step of how I recreated this broke ass pink dresser for little girls into a lightsaber worthy dresser for a man who clearly has way too many toys. Ah, shut up. We're going to look for secondhand pieces online, specifically mid-century modern since they're making a comeback. And they're usually handcrafted with real hardwood, super high quality, and will probably last you a lifetime. Not only is this choice amazing for the environment by minimizing waste, but if you put enough effort into it, in the future you can always choose to resell it for equal or even greater value because it is a salvaged antique. So we found this little diamond in the rough um, on Facebook, Facebook Marketplace. It had a nice hanger option, which was pretty cool, and four spacious drawers. Perfect. Step number two, always design your piece first. This will save you so much time and get it exactly how you want it first draft out. Our inspiration was this poster that Kyle got at a Star Wars convention about 10 years ago in Orlando, Florida. Super, super beautiful. So he threw out some ideas for me and the words that he used was modern, old colors, clean lines, and Adidas shoes, which actually made perfect sense now that I think about it. So the way that you may want to do this is you can draw out your design, you can use um, Microsoft Paint even. I used Photoshop and I just started designing and finally landed on this version. Now, let's take it to the shop. Step three, sand your piece. Sand down all the parts that you'll be painting over. At this time, remove any hardware, including handles and hinges for a more professional finish. So this is the part that is the most tedious and the most boring and the most crucial. You can either do it by hand using a simple 220 grit paper, or if you have it, you can use a palm sander at 150 grit. Now we ended up doing both since the item was already refinished and had a lot of paint streaks on it. I wanted a super smooth finish with no paint streaks. At the end of it, vacuum the piece and wipe down with a lint-free cloth. Step four, tape down the non-painted areas. Um, whether you're painting by hand or with a sprayer, this will give you clean professional lines. So I have an inexpensive HVLP sprayer. It costed me about 30 bucks, which was amazing. If you do happen to take my advice and choose to use an HVLP sprayer, tape down and cover everything. And I mean everything. The paint will go everywhere because of all the tiny little microparticles, they will just float onto the rest of your piece. So um, two seconds to spray paint, but 20 minutes to cover everything. And 
it is totally worth it. Don't skip this part. Step five, this is the best and most satisfying part. Pray and spray. When that's done and you're happy with it, let it dry fully for about 24 hours at least. So because I have two different layers of paint, one's blue and a vibrant orange, um, I'll be repeating step four and five again. Step six, remove the tape. Oh, this part is so satisfying. Damn, bro. Wait, 24 hours. At this point, if you're crunched for time and don't really care too much about the damages, then technically you're already done. It probably looks the way that you want it to. But if you wanted to withstand the test of time, and I do recommend this, you are going to want to use a hardener or lacquer to finish your piece. And this is where a sprayer comes in handy and it takes the piece to a whole nother level. I recommend anything with a satin sheen. Matte sheens are beautiful, but scuffable and really hard to wash. Satin gives it just enough sheen, not too much, um, but it also gives it a vibrance to a piece while giving it durability and some added protection. So you can like knock into it and nothing will happen, no scratches. So glossy finishes are pretty gross and highlight every single imperfection in wood. So I wouldn't recommend it on something that is already refurbished. Go with a satin sheen. So before lacquering, step number seven, sand the piece with 320 grit sandpaper carefully. Now this part is a little bit scary because I know the piece probably looks perfect and you're probably thinking, oh my God, you're crazy. It looks so amazing, but trust me, it is so worth it. This will remove any excess graininess on the surface um, and adds a little bit more of a sheen due to the smoothness of the surface. You know, when you like run your hands along a table and it's like baby butt smooth and super shiny, this is what it does. Little to no pressure just to scuff up the surface and then vacuum and wipe with a lint-free cloth. And now it's time for the last step. Step eight apply the lacquer. You can use any lacquer that you want, um, but I suggest something that is water-based and satin finish. It has good dry time, it would be less toxic, very little smell, uh, and it has a super even finish with no water streaks, no marks or anything like that, just super, super smooth. If you are applying with a rag, I would recommend that you dilute it with a little bit of water for the first few coats and then full strength at the last coat. But if you're using a sprayer, it's not necessary. You could just spray away. After the second last coat, wait an hour. Um, some would even say you would wait a full day and then repeat step number seven, which is lightly sand with 320 grit. And this will make your finish super, super smooth. Now repeat step eight for the final coat. And you're done. 
wait 24 hours for the lacquer to harden for light use and then another seven days for it to completely harden and cure. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for or have randomly skipped over to because you didn't want to watch the whole video, this is the Mandalorian slash Star Wars inspired mid-century modern dresser, hashtag lightsaber shrine. Yeah. <laughs>